Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker, and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is using the court system to change healthcare. Now, today's video is based upon a couple of recent articles. The first one is from the Wall Street Journal from just a few days ago. Many of you have probably seen it. And it was about a law firm that is called Fairmark Partners that is suing large hospital systems in three states, Wisconsin, North Carolina, and Connecticut on the part of individuals for those hospitals engaging in antitrust behavior and anti-competitive behavior. Now, they're saying that these hospital systems in these states are engaging in price gouging and in all or nothing contracts with insurance carriers. And an all or nothing contract is where the hospital system says, look, if, if we're going to be in network, then all of our facilities and all of our doctors have to be in network. You can't, you, the insurance carrier or the employer, you can't exclude certain doctors or facilities within our network. Now, of course, these hospital systems are so big that there's probably some doctors in some facilities that are, you know, they might be kind of pricey or maybe their quality is not so good. I mean, some of these hospital systems have dozens of hospitals. You wouldn't necessarily want all of them. They're not all of high quality, right? It's kind of a bell-shaped curve here. And the point is, is that the hospital systems have such large contracting power because of their size that they're saying, hey, we're just going to charge a lot of money to consumers and we're going to force all of our facilities and all of our doctors to be in network when that might not be in the patient's best interest, right? So the two uh, lead partners in Fairmark Partners, they make an interesting point as to why are they, as a private law firm, engaging in antitrust, anti-competitive private lawsuits? Isn't that the role of the government to do that? And so they specifically say, look, there is actually an enforcement gap in antitrust law that Fairmark Partners is trying to fill. And that gap is where regulators, in order to carry out the, this antitrust um, use of the courts, would have to engage in like a five-year legal battle that would cost millions or tens of millions of dollars. And at the end of the day, that's a proposition that a lot of regulators are unable or unwilling to do. So they, as a private law firm, are filling that gap. And I think that's wonderful. That was highly interesting. Now, why is price gouging and all or nothing contracting happening? And I've, cro I've talked about this many times on a healthcare scene, but we're just gonna review it briefly here. It's because of massive hospital consolidation. Hospitals, regionally and nationally, have merged together in over 979 mergers and acquisitions deals since 2010. So in the last 12 years, there have been almost a thousand M&A deals among hospitals forming larger and larger hospital systems, such that a health affairs article stated that 90% of the metropolitan areas in America have highly concentrated markets for hospital services. Highly concentrated meaning there's not a lot of competition. And so we all know that capitalism without competition is exploitation, right? It's competition that uh, protects consumers. It's competition that brings prices down. It's competition that improves the, the quality of service. If you gotta compete, you wanna do better. If you don't compete, the prices go up and the quality goes down. If anybody remembers AT&T long distance phone service back in the early 80s, it was bad. Okay, if anyone remembers cable TV, it was bad, right? So the point is, is that consolidation and anti-competitive behavior, bad for consumers. So these folks here at Fairmark Partners are trying to do something about it, good for them. Now here's the interesting thing. Where are they getting their money, right? If it's going to take five years and millions of dollars, where in the world is Fairmark Partners getting the money to do this? Interesting. From a philanthropist, from a number of philanthropists, one of whom, which this article in the Wall Street Journal highlights, is a gentleman by the name of John Arnold. 
I mean, good for him. I mean, this is why I love America. So you may or may not agree with what John Arnold and what Fairmark Partners are doing, but the point is, is that in America, if you see something that you don't like, like, let's not make excuses. Let's do something about it. And they are doing something about it. Now, the question is, why are they doing it through the court systems, right? So people typically think about, okay, well, we need to pass a law. We need universal health care. We need an act of Congress. So interestingly, I want to contrast what Fairmark Partners and John Arnold are doing in using the courts, the judicial branch, vis-a-vis -vis the legislative branch and passing laws. And that is from an, a recent article in Health Affairs entitled, Health Care Jobs Are a Barrier to Health Reform. And in this incredible article, I will leave a link in the show notes to this article in Health Affairs as well. It's fantastic. I encourage all of you to read it. It looks at, the author looks at, okay, how have the number of healthcare jobs and therefore the political influence of healthcare, how has it changed over time? And they compared from 1990 to 2020. Okay, that's a long period of time. It's 30 years. So back in... Uh, 1990, there were 11 million healthcare jobs, and it has since grown to now in 2020, there are 21 million healthcare jobs. Healthcare is the largest industry by employment in America. Now, let's contrast that with manufacturing. So, manufacturing back in 1990, manufacturing was the largest industry in America by employment. There were 18 million jobs in manufacturing in 1990, and today it's only 12 million. So, basically, healthcare and manufacturing have totally flip flopped. And then they looked at the, they ranked it by states, and they said, okay, well, back in 1990, how many states had healthcare as the largest employer in the state? And back in 1990, only two states, New York and North Dakota, had health care as the largest employers in those states in terms of number of jobs. Now, fast forward to 2020, 47 out of 50 states, in other words, almost all of them, have health care as the largest employer in the state. Now, let's contrast that with manufacturing. If manufacturing was the largest, back in 1990, manufacturing was the largest employer in 34 states, and today it is just two. Manufacturing has been decimated. Manufacturing jobs have been decimated, and they have been replaced by healthcare jobs. And the point of this Health Affairs article is that the size of the healthcare industry itself can block Congress from acting in a way to decrease healthcare costs. Because of the huge economic and jobs impact that healthcare organizations have in states, it makes it almost politically prohibitive for the legislative branch, branch to enact any health reform. Well, shoot, that explains a lot, doesn't it? So, we don't need to whine and cry and complain about that. Listen, when one door shuts, you go to the window. If that window closes, you go to the roof. You find a way. Again, that's what I love about America. We don't make excuses. We just find solutions. And at the end of the day, these articles actually make me highly optimistic. And at the end of the day, look, the court system approach, that might not work. And it doesn't matter because we'll find another way. Because at the end of the day, major hospital systems and health insurance companies, they're on the wrong side of history. Now, as Martin Luther King said, the moral arc of the universe is very long, but it bends towards justice. Like, it's going to happen. Now, I don't know when it's going to happen. It might take a really long time, but the point is, is that these are fantastic examples of creativity in helping to bend that curve. And that's my point for today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.